the world. All we got really is the people out there, wherever they are. The people out there, the 95% that we're talking about, the overpopulation, whatever you want to call they're it, probably going is to who we were trying to reach with the television program. They're probably I don't know who you were trying to reach, but that's who I was trying to reach. I was trying to get people to say, okay, there's a kid with uh, his hair a little longer than the average. Uh, maybe he said something. Maybe he didn't, you know. Yeah. And uh, maybe he, he stirred me to think about something. And I don't think I stirred anybody to think about anything. I don't think that, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a communication thing going on. I think there's a big gap. A big gap. I don't think you understand me, and I can and I can talk to you personally. I really don't. I think that as you visualize uh, the concepts of, of 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 revolution, I don't. As you visualize the concepts of self awareness and training, uh, gestalt uh, training that I had on the program one time with Oasis, the group that we had, right. yeah. I, I I see probably in a total different light. And you know, what the big surprise to me is is that some kid that's 12 years old now is going to see it in a total different light than I will, too, and I'll probably look back at that particular person in, in 10, 15 years and say, I don't understand it. So the people out there on the streets are involved because they, they want to become part of the changing of it. They want to express their feelings, and the only way they feel they can do that is through violence. <coughs> well, uh, look, uh, I, I don't know the exact quote, uh, but... Uh, uh, a society can never remain static. I mean, it's just, it's impossible. Situation changes, people change, and, uh, and the factors involved in, in a society uh, change constantly. Uh, for example, uh, this society is uh, incalculably different than it was before television existed. More radiation. They also did an implant where you have a plastic with the radioactive seeds in it, mm -hmm. and they'd put that in every night and take it out in the morning for, I think, eight weeks. Altogether, together, it's close to four and a half months of daily radiation. How was your gut reaction to dealing with a person like that? I mean, you definitely have to have a response to that. I mean, you emotionally are going to feel something. It hurts. It hurts each time I experience the pain of the pilgrimage that a patient goes through when they face the uncertainty as to whether they'll be alive in three months or six months. But on the other hand, as in the case of patients such as we saw tonight, there's a joy in knowing that people can find meaning and purposefulness in the Valley of the Shadow. Well, one of the exercises that I saw being done uh, in the slides was, the, and also in the demonstration, was the fact that you are allowing a great amount of trust to another human being to let your head be lifted that's a valuable part of your body and that could be dropped and possibly hurt. Now, this is something that bugs me a little bit. I have to say that. If you suddenly find yourself uh, involved in letting yourself trust, letting yourself become part of a, a, a society that trusts itself, you're going to step out in the world and they're going to step on you. Yes, that's just as true First, as my walking across the street. You're assuming that you're forced into the position of having your head lifted. You still have the right. You still have the choice. But you, and wouldn't, the be getting, you wouldn't be getting the proper uh, feeling from it if you did not give the complete You would either way. Autonomous. In other words, you would still have a learning process going on if your decision was, and it's your decision, not to have your head lifted. You would still have a learning process going on by saying, well, I didn't trust that person. Why? You would start to search inside of yourself for some of the computerized. Uh, things that have already gone on in your head. And you would then begin to work that out in your group. But no one is forcing you into a position of, as you're using the word trust, and as I use trust, it means that I, as an adult, am ready to take that step. I'm not being pushed, forced, cajoled in any way to take that step. I do it on my own accord, because I would like to attempt it. And I can abort that move at any time I want, as a member of a group. The development of a human being living in today's society, I tend to think is very important. But I also tend to think that if you really want sensitivity, and if you really want to feel something, you might as well just go out and live in the woods by yourself, because you're not going to find the rest of the world copacetic with your ideas. Absolutely not. Now, now you again, you're for asking, <laughs> you're asking. You spoke for you, but not for me. <laughs> are these now. Uh, so
so many people are born in the Eastern countries mm -hmm. who practice Hinduism or Buddhism. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are the Western cultures and the few here who also do the same. I tend not to think of being fundamentalist, but uh, aren't all pathways leading in the same direction? Oh, yes. All pathways lead the same up the mountain top, but some are shorter. Some are more Short comfortable in <laughs> shortcuts. And remember, uh, though in the East they practice Buddhism, they practice Hinduism, Jainism, many other religions, remember yoga is not a religion per se. It's a life philosophy. So one can be Catholic, one can be Buddhist, one can be Hindu, one can be an atheist and still practice yoga. Because it's not accepting something and saying, oh yes, I believe, I believe, Lord, wherever you're at, you know. It's a question of turning within oneself diving deep into the inner consciousness, into the emotions, into the intellect, and going beyond these to see what exists. So much, it's, much is said about uh, karma and yes. working off karma, good mm -hmm. karma, bad karma. Uh, how does this relate to living on this planet? And what, right. what, what are your feelings about uh, reincarnation? Right. I, I would like to get into some of the things that we could get to talk about and some of the activities as to why you got involved. First, first of all, Mr. Baldwin, right, or Blue, right? So I right. Go blue, Blue, okay. Right. Blue, why did you get involved with the Youth Center Group? I was working as a conscientious objector, uh, started two years ago. I just got out last Saturday. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, I'm released from the service. You have to work two years in, an, in a uh, civilian occupation uh, in the national interest, is the vague terminology. And so I started at Evanston Hospital in the north suburbs, got fired, thank God and moved to Grace Church because I heard that was a groovy place to be when you get fired. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, got involved initially in the runaway program, which uh, is Grace's, has been Grace's mainstay in the youth work. Tell me about the programs that they do have down there. Really? Do, you, do, you, do you think that, uh, that uh, as they stated, you'll come back after you develop? Uh, you, know why, you know why I'm mad at you? I really am. I'm a little perplexed by you because I, I get this feeling like, oh, Groovy, I'm into a good thing, and uh, I'm developing my mind, you know, and uh, I know where I'm going. But you're not taking anybody else with you. Yeah, the thing about it is, is I can be of no real service to anyone until I am able to straighten out my own thing. See, I know this. Uh, there's any person who stands up in front of anyone and says, uh, you have to do this, or you have to do this, or you have this neurosis, you have this problem, and they are, they've got the same things going. They're not helping anyone. <coughs> so what I'm doing is I'm busily engaged upon straightening out my own body, my own mind, and getting my, my own spiritual thing together, because I know that's the only way I'm ever going to help anyone. And I'm young. I'm and this experience that goes on, you're seeing, and I'm trying to explain it verbally, goes on in their guts their feeling on their inside as they are sculpturally Quite describing beautiful. their own feeling. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. But they might not have been able to talk about Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, early. thank you very much for tuning in with us this week on Deadlock. I hope very possibly you got something into it. Next week on Deadlock, I would like very much to introduce you to possible karma related to reincarnation. Are you back on this earth or is this your first trip? My name is Charles Lang. I hope very possibly you'll be with us next week. Peace. Deadlock in the fraction of time that we are projected on Earth. Beginning to feel that this fraction of time Part of a pattern of earth. And the prophets gather and they come.